the first package of the day is hard to open. Well, I had to shred that envelope. So what's the reward? Oh, yes, these are Nintendo and Super Nintendo PCB mount in one case, and I'm not sure if that's... Those are really thick pins. They're not solder cups, though. So I guess both are PCB mount Nintendo and Super Nintendo connectors. The reason I want this, I'm not trying to make a video game console, but I need to go look for the controllers. So there's the Super Nintendo and the regular Nintendo and their cable plugs. So if I want to do a project involving reading in these controllers, which I do want to do, now I have a way to plug into those and put them in a project so I can maybe use these as video game controllers but for some other project. And there's two here that appear to be related based on description. And it does look like what I thought it would be. What's the point of this rip thing when it's still vacuum sealed below that? You, I guess you have to rip it on an angle to get down into the actual product. These are a couple of Arduino Nanos and USB-C, since I am converting things over as I buy new things. So I've been using up these Nanos on projects lately. I never really had a big stock of these, so it's time to get a few more. For example, this AY38910 sound generator has one on it, and this Color Computer Cassette file playback project has a dedicated nano on it so I needed to replace at least these two and be able to do more projects. So these have USB mini on it. Now I have USB C. Another thing about this cassette file player, it has these push buttons on here. There's a blank board. It was designed with a footprint for right angle push buttons though. So instead of pushing it from the top, you can push those from the side. And if this is in an enclosure, that makes it easier to get at these. I didn't have them in stock at the time, but I ordered them and finally they came late. So it looks like I got three colors. There's a black, a gray, and some kind of a dull orange color. Looks like the part number family is B3F31XX. That's more like it. So right angled push buttons. I should probably have put the footprint closer to the edge of the board, but that's fine. And these right angled push buttons seem to be used in a lot of retro projects like this. So I'll be ready the next time I need to do a design with those. And this one... I guess this is 6 millimeter times 10 something. Is that 10 feet? 10 meters? This is one of those wire sleeve jackety braid things. So if you make some sort of a custom wiring harness and it's a bundle of wires, you want to maybe contain it a little. You could tie wrap it every so often. Oh, they have one of those things like clothing tag, whatever those are called. So it's this braided sleeve. You can open that up and bunch it up if needed to get the wires going and just move this along and then it kind of tightens down on itself, helps hold things together. So for this Coco cassette player, I had to make these two little custom cables. I was just able to twist these together and they held together okay. 
in the past I've done things like put a tie wrap every so often, but it's still loose and sloppy. So if I really wanted to do it neatly, I could run the cables through this. And this is also something on things like 3D printers to help keep the wiring harnesses organized. This one's a bit heavy feeling. So, yeah, that's substantial. Oh, I see, it's a hunk of metal. It's those large diameter, what I'm gonna call transducers. I ordered a bunch of these large diameter in the past and they never arrived, so I got a refund and I reordered from someone else. Finally got them. I have several other ones if I can find them. There we go. There's a sample of two different sizes. This is a very small one and this is a more typical size one. I was using, I think, this size back when I made the teensy drum sample playback triggering circuit. So you hit this, it generates a voltage spike, and Teensy plays a pre-recorded drum sound every time. Doing projects like that, sometimes I thought maybe you need a larger diameter to pick up vibrations in something else. Like if I put this on a larger mechanism that is going to pick up vibrations from here, maybe this would be more sensitive or maybe not. Maybe the smallest one would work better, who knows, but I wanted a bunch of these to be able to experiment because I have some other ideas I want to try these kind of things with to pick up vibration and trigger some response in a circuit. The last item, it was from Amazon and so it was in a bunch of other stuff so it's already open, but this is a Triton Audio FET head. Phantom powered preamp for ribbon and dynamic microphones adds 27 dB of clean gain. That pretty much says it all. Okay, it's in a bag inside the tube. There it is. Made in Holland. Now there's an XLR plug and jack here. So this is an inline 27 dB clean boost for microphones. What is this all about? Why do I need this? So in this case, if I were to use this as a microphone interface over USB by plugging a microphone into here, I can use this for video voiceovers or whatever else. And I've got these microphones, they're all dynamic, that I've had for up to 20 something years. So this is a Shure SM57, SM58, Eight and a Radio Shack dynamic microphone. This one, actually, I don't think it works well. But otherwise, the reason we need this clean boost, dynamic microphones are a lot less sensitive than others like condenser microphones. So they're good at picking up very loud sounds like putting these in front of a loud singer or a loud musical instrument to record. But if you're using the same kind of microphone for just normal level voice talking, the output level may be too low for some interfaces to pick up. So you have to crank the input level here. And even if you can get it loud enough, now you've got a lot of noise you're amplifying. So you turn the level back down and insert one of these boosters. So normally the microphone cable would just plug in and it's plugged in here. But if you need the boost, you plug this directly in and there is 27 dB of gain. So this being an amplifier, it uses power. So you have to turn on phantom power here. It powers this amplifier does not pass on any power for the mic, and that's how the whole system will function. I settled on this one after watching a bunch of reviews and seeing this one compared against others in the same video, so I could tell does it change the sound too much. And I watched multiple videos and saw different combinations of units like this. I ended up settling on this, 
And now let's go try with and without the booster. Here's the SM57 without the extra boost. The Focusrite recording device has the gain about halfway. So as I turn up the gain toward maximum, and I'm about three inches away from the microphone now, this is maximum level. Now I'm going to turn the gain back down and put the inline amplifier on. Now with that inline amplifier, phantom power is on and the gain on the device is halfway. I think it sounds already okay if I keep turning it up to okay. So obviously I can Obviously, I can only go so far on the gain before it starts clipping, which is good. It means I have lots of headroom on here. I can now set the gain wherever I want without having to crank it and get all kinds of extra noise. So that was a good result. I think I'm happy with that purchase. There's others that are maybe two or three times the cost of this. When I saw reviews, I didn't really see the benefit over this. And there's some that were maybe half the cost of this that sounded like garbage. And I think there might have been one that was actually okay. But I went with that one. Maybe if I had to get a second one, I'd try one of the other cheaper ones that sounded okay as well. In the meantime, maybe now I can improve the audio recording on certain things. Whether it's recording talking or using it to record some audio generating circuit. Thanks to Patreon and channel supporters for helping make all of this possible. Now I gotta find somewhere to put all this stuff.